Alrighty, fire alarm enthusiasts out there. This is going to be a video explaining about fire alarm control panels. The reason why I'm making this video is because Christmas is coming up. I know there's going to be a lot of people wondering what kind of fire alarm panel to get if they're getting one for Christmas. Well, I'm here to explain about the different types of control panels and how to work them and what you need and etc, etc, etc. Anyway, so let me go ahead and start with my conventional panel. This here is my Silonite SK2 fire alarm control panel that's conventional. It has one NAC circuit and two zones. Basically, if you need for a control panel, I would definitely recommend starting with a conventional panel because it's very easy to work with, especially the Silonite SK2 because the programming is done by these dip switches right here. So what you're going to need to start off with the fire alarm control panels, you're going to need the actual panel. And my suggestion for you, like I said, is a conventional panel. The next thing you're going to need is a power cord. Right here I have an AC power cord that I use to, to power up my control panel. This is just a standard computer power cord that if you strip, it will come out to three wires. It comes out with a black, a white, and a green. The black represents hot, the white represents neutral, and the green represents ground. You plug it into the AC port, which is right here. If I can lift it up. Right here. Ow, I just bang my finger. That actually really hurt. Anyway, so you plug it in right there. And when the, power pan when the, when the panel is actually powered on, do not touch anything that's got a wire unless the control panel is off. Otherwise, you will shock yourself. And I'm not joking. I haven't done it, thank goodness, but you will electrocute yourself. Anyway, the next thing you're going to need is fire alarm wire, or any type of wire, pretty much. My recommendation is using solid-stranded wiring to use in your control panel. So solid wiring helps make make it easier to loop the wire into the terminals so you can power up your fire you power up your horns and your pole stations simple simply I'm sorry guys I am very tired today I had a very long shift at work so I do apologize for my stuttering anyway wiring is very important the next thing you're going to need are resistors these might come with it if you get your control panel new in box or if you buy a used panel, it comes with resistors in your set. If not, the best kind of resistors to use are these right here. It's kind of hard to see. They are... These are 10... No, these are 100K ohm resistors. These are 100K ohm resistors. And how I can tell that is by the little colored stripes on the resistor. There's a brown, a black, an orange, and then there's a gold. The gold has nothing. Don't worry about the gold. Worry about the first three colors, colored stripes. I will make a video in the future explaining about the different resistors. Those resistors help close off the line in a fire alarm circuit. And of course, you're always going to need your notification appliances and your pulse stations. Those you can easily find on eBay. I'll make a separate video about those in a little bit. But anyway, let me go ahead and show you how to work an addressable panel if you decide to get one of those. And by the way, I'm sorry, my room is messy. Let's just say if you uh, work more than 30 hours a week plus going to school, you don't really have time to clean up your room. But winter break is coming up actually after tomorrow, so I'm pretty happy about that. So, the next, so now, oh, one more thing I did mention. Every control panel always requires batteries. You can find these batteries at Radio Shack or in a catalog, but I will warn you, batteries are very expensive. These two batteries, these Enercell Seal Lead Acid Batteries, 12 volts DC, 7 amp hours, cost me $35 a piece. And I'm not joking, they are very expensive because they're very big batteries. Anyway, for control for addressable panels, 
you have your same NAC circuits, but instead of conventional zones, you have SLC loops, which are used for the adjustable points. If you wire those parallel, you could basically program your SLC very simply in the LCD. And the way the simplex panel works is inside the pull station, and it's not going to go off because the panel is off. Inside here, inside behind this sticker, and I do apologize about the light on my camera, it is very bright. I'll try to get this open. There we go. Right back there, there are dip switches that actually help program the address of this initiating device. So this initiating device right now is currently set to um, 0, 0, 0, is, is that set to 1? I think, it's, I think it's set to 1, yeah. I would have to look closely in order for it to, to actually understand which one it is. But that's actually how you program an addressable point is by setting the dip switches to the address and then program the address to say what it actually is. So this is a pull station, so whenever I pull the pull station, it says pull station firewall, basically. Because this is the location, it's on my firewall. Anyway. That's pretty much all you need to know about fire alarm control panels, addressable or conventional. If you have any questions regarding what kind of panels you like to start with that are conventional or addressable, feel free to leave a message or leave a comment, and I'll be glad to help you guys out. So, with that said, guys, I thank you guys for watching, and I will see you later, and good luck finding a control panel.